Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on more weird signs and symptoms of a vitamin B12 deficiency. So it's going to be a continuation of our first lesson on this topic. So if you want more information, please check out my first lesson. Before we talk about even more weird or atypical signs and symptoms of a vitamin B12 deficiency, let's briefly talk about what vitamin B12 is, where we get it, and why we actually need it. So vitamin B12 is also known as cobalamin. We can get it from our diet, from things like meat and fish, and also from dairy and eggs. Now we can get a vitamin B12 deficiency due to either reduced dietary intake or from compromised absorption. We might be getting enough in our diet, but we're not able to absorb it properly, perhaps due to some gastrointestinal condition. Now we need vitamin B12 because it's important in red blood cell production. It's also important in DNA synthesis, and it's also important in central nervous system or CNS functioning. Now, there are many different signs and symptoms of a vitamin B12 deficiency. The ones that are typically discussed include depression, fatigue, and paresthesias, so numbness and tingling sensations in different parts of the body, and also anemia because it's involved in red blood cell production. It can cause a megaloblastic anemia. However, there are other unusual and uncommon signs and symptoms of a vitamin B12 deficiency, and we're going to talk about those as we go through this lesson. So the first set we're going to talk about are even more neuropsychiatric symptoms that are not thought about frequently. So vitamin B12 deficiency has been described as the great masquerader. It can masquerade as many different conditions and have many different signs and symptoms. So some of these include headaches. So headaches are often not thought about when we talk about a vitamin B12 deficiency. And there are particular headaches that have been described that can occur in patients with a vitamin B12 deficiency. These include tension type headaches. So a tension type headache is a band-like headache that occurs across the head, so it can occur bilaterally. This is the very common headache that many people can experience. And vitamin B12 deficiency can also induce migraine headaches as well in some patients. So migraine headaches are going to be unilateral, so one-sided pounding severe headaches that can cause issues like nausea and vomiting. And there can also be relief of these headaches with reduced activity or avoidance of light, for instance. So tension type headaches have been noted in the literature in children with vitamin B12 deficiency. So when they correct the vitamin B12 deficiency in children, these tension type headaches seem to be relieved or are less frequent. And then migraine headaches have been described as being more likely in patients with vitamin B12 deficiency. And not only a vitamin B12 deficiency, but it has been also noted that having a deficiency in other B vitamins like niacin can increase the likelihood of having more frequent and more severe symptoms of migraine headaches. So it has been noted that supplementation with B12 and in other cases where there are other B vitamin deficiencies, supplementation with those vitamins will reduce the frequency of migraines and severity of symptoms. So this is something that we can think about if patients are having issues with migraine headaches or tension type headaches, supplementing with vitamin B12. The next set of signs and symptoms we're going to discuss with regards to a vitamin B12 deficiency are gastrointestinal effects. These are often not thought about when we talk about patients who have vitamin B12 deficiency. So these include constipation. So patients who have a vitamin B12 deficiency can have issues with constipation, and constipation is going to be decreased frequency of bowel movements or increased consistency of stool. So if we were to look at a bristle stool chart, here is a bristle stool chart. Type 4 on a bristle stool chart is considered normal, and then type 1, 2, and 3 are considered constipation. And the thought as to why constipation may occur is due to a particular biochemical process. So vitamin B12 is required for two enzymes, and one of those enzymes is homocysteine methyltransferase. This enzyme converts homocysteine into methionine, and methionine is used for what we call the activated methyl cycle. So if we don't have enough vitamin B12 for this enzyme, the precursor homocysteine will not be converted into methionine. So what will happen is homocysteine will start to increase. It will build up. This will lead to increased homocysteine levels, or what we would call hyperhomocysteinemia, so high levels of homocysteine in the blood. And this high homocysteine seems to reduce gastrointestinal motility. So this high level of homocysteine seems to slow down gastrointestinal motility. So gastrointestinal motility is the movement of contents through the gastrointestinal system. If it's slowing it down, that may lead to constipation, so you're decreasing frequency of bowel movements. But other patients may experience diarrhea. So diarrhea, if we were to look at the Bristol stool chart, diarrhea would be considered type 5, type 6, and type 7 stool. So diarrhea is increased frequency of bowel movements and or decreased consistency of stool. And 
vitamin B12 deficiency can actually be a cause of chronic diarrhea. In some cases, chronic diarrhea is going to be defined as having diarrhea more days than not for greater than two weeks or greater than four weeks. This is often going to be in a more severe vitamin B12 deficiency, so it's not going to be something that occurs as frequently in mild B12 deficiencies, and it's going to be more rare, so it's going to be more uncommon as a gastrointestinal effect. Some other gastrointestinal effects that we can see in a vitamin B12 deficiency include nausea and vomiting. So feeling nauseous, possible vomiting. This, again, may be due to that reduced gastrointestinal motility we talked about before due to that hyperhomocystinemia. And we can also see increased bloating and gas in these patients as well. And this may be due to disruptions to digestion due to vitamin B12 deficiency. And then anorexia and weight loss can also occur as well. So anorexia is a reduced appetite or loss of appetite. And then you can have that subsequent weight loss. Again, this is going to be related to nausea and vomiting. They may not have as much of an appetite and also due to B12 deficiency induced gastrointestinal issues. And then a third category of findings we can see with a vitamin B12 deficiency are dermatological findings. Again, these are not often thought about when we look at a vitamin B12 deficiency patient. So these include skin hyperpigmentation. So skin hyperpigmentation are darkened patches on the skin. It can also occur on the nails. You can see in this image here, there's on the nails and on the skin. This actually may be an early manifestation of a vitamin B12 deficiency in some patients. So this can actually be one of the first signs we can see in a patient who has a B12 deficiency. And in some cases, it may be the only clinical finding of a B12 deficiency. And this skin hyperpigmentation has been noted to be present on the feet and on the back of the hands as well. So feet and the back of the hands. And then dermatitis is also another skin finding that can be found in patients with a B12 deficiency. So dermatitis is going to be a skin rash. It is going to be polymorphic. So the skin rash or the little spots on the skin are going to be different shapes and sizes. And they're going to be non-pigmented, meaning that they're not going to have a increased coloration to them. So it's not going to be entirely like this image here. It's going to be less pigmented and more like the background skin. It's going to be maculopapular and in some cases vesicular. Maculopapular is going to be a combination of macules and papules. So macules are flat skin lesions less than 10 millimeters in diameter. Papules are raised skin lesions less than 10 millimeters in diameter. And vesicles are going to be raised skin lesions with a little bit of fluid in them. And the particular location where this skin rash has been described to occur is the neck, elbows, wrists, and heels. And another particular skin finding we may see with patients who have a B12 deficiency is jaundice. So jaundice is going to be a yellowing of the skin and it can also occur in the whites of the eyes as well. That would be considered scleral icterus. So the reason that this occurs is because vitamin B12 deficiency causes ineffective erythropoiesis. So erythropoiesis is just the term we use for red blood cell production. So because we talked about the importance of B12 in producing red blood cells, if we don't have B12 around, it can lead to poorly produced red blood cells. And this can lead to issues with those red blood cell health and also lead to increased hemolysis. Hemolysis is breakdown or destruction of red blood cells. So because these red blood cells are not produced and as healthy as they should be, they can break down and degrade. And this will lead into the release of what we call bilirubin. So bilirubin is actually a breakdown product of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is inside red blood cells, and this leads to increases in bilirubin in the blood. This is what we call hyperbilirubinemia. So hyperbilirubinemia, this high level of bilirubin in the blood, eventually leads to yellowing of the skin as bilirubin binds to the elastin in the skin. This is the reason why we can see jaundice in patients with a B12 deficiency. And another skin condition that is rarely thought about in connection with a B12 deficiency is vitiligo. So vitiligo is actually an autoimmune condition that involves destruction of melanocytes. Melanocytes are the cells in the skin that actually produce melanin, that pigment. So because there's an autoimmune attack against these melanocytes, the cells that produce melanin, you're actually destroying those melanocytes and you're destroying the ability to produce melanin. And this is going to lead to hypopigmentation, a reduced pigment of the skin. This is why we see skin lesions that involve hypopigmentation. And with regards to the connection between vitiligo and B12 deficiency, it has been shown that having a B12 deficiency actually worsens this condition. It's going to increase the likelihood of having destruction of melanocytes and hypopigmentation. And there has been evidence showing an improvement of hypopigmentation with B12 supplementation and also supplementation with folic acid. Please check out my lesson on how vitamin B12 is digested and absorbed. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.